All right, right there. Questions for Mailbag Monday. Hi, I'm Johnny. Uh, we do this thing called Mailbag Monday where you write in on Facebook and we answer your questions. So here goes nothing. Uh, I'm just going to start right at the top here. Monica Kissinger. Hi, Monica. How are you? Uh, asks, how come you don't write back to your fans like a lot of bands do? I'd have to say, and, and you know, no offense to anyone out there, but I think a video response, a video response. Sorry, that was a really bad uh, impression there. Um, if you can name that impression, by the way. No, you forget it. Uh, I'm just going to say a video response is definitely kind of one-upping the, the writing back, although we do try to write back to everyone we can. So, uh, Monica, if you had something you wanted to ask that you need a, a written answer to, I'd be happy to, to do that. Get out, put some pen to paper, and pff, pff, U.S. Postal Service, Canadian Postal Service, highly underrated. I'm in. If you want a written response, you know what? Just write, you know, you write me and I'll write you back. I have no problem with that whatsoever. <laughs> okay, moving along here. Um, hmm, who should I pick? Oh, this is good. Okay. Autumn Johnson writes, Hi, Autumn. This is Autumn. Autumn Johnson, my favorite songs off, songs off of the Rise Up EP are Tear Down the Wall and Everything. Here are my questions. But if you can only answer one, that's totally cool. Thanks, Autumn. I'm, I'm going to actually do them all. Um, is Tear Down the Wall an homage to Build a Wall from Art of Dying's self-titled debut in a way that it represents growth? Interesting. Um, actually, I did an interview a few... Uh, weeks ago and the interviewer brought up the exact same question and I had never put the two together <laughs> um, yeah I, I hadn't, hadn't put the two together and build a wall was such a, a deep track on the uh, indie record um, means a lot to me you know it was like uh, um, inspired by Ed, Ed Ground Poe actually and a relationship I was in at the time so um, there's a, an Edgar Allan Poe uh, short story called I think it's called the black cat and, uh, yeah, it was inspired by um, the idea of trying to hide something behind a wall and, and not being able to hide. Well, we all do it with our emotions, I guess. So um, we're all building walls in our lives. And I guess, yeah, tear down the wall probably was a subconscious um, answer to, to build a wall. It's kind of funny. But thanks for bringing that up. And definitely, yeah. We build the walls, we got to tear them down. So, moving right along. The autumn, you're still here. Uh, your question's still here. Um, second question. Here's my second question to do with everything. Sorry. Uh, a lot of times in songs, there is a certain spiritual animal or such that is mentioned. Tigers, wolves, butterflies, etc. Of course, tigers and wolves. Who doesn't like tigers and wolves? Um... Was there a certain reason that the lyric is dot dot dot, but dragonfly, you've always been the one, instead of butterfly or what have you? I'm just curious because dragonflies are my spiritual totem, my spirit guide. They also represent transformation and change. I don't know if perhaps that could be a reason. Thank you for your wonderful music. That has helped me in many ways. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, Autumn. Looking forward to the release of the full album, Meus Vita Utvete. Viver. Viver. I don't know Latin, but that does mean Meus Vita Ut Viver means my life to live, which is the art of dying, uh, which is what we're all about. The art of dying is my life to live. Anyway, Autumn, that is a long question, <laughs> but you know what? Um, I've met you on the road and I know how much, uh, the music means to you. And I, and I'm, I actually follow you on Instagram and, um, you know, I get uh, a lot of your drawings and a lot of your inspiration. And I gotta say, I'm super inspired. We all, I don't know if you know this, but the band is always very inspired by, um, 
you guys, our fans, it, it, it means a lot to us that, that, you're, uh, that you're on this journey with us. So to answer your question about everything, the reason I wrote that about a dragonfly is uh, that is actually my nickname for someone. So it was uh, very fitting that it, uh, it was just a real moment. I was writing it about a real experience. So there you go. There was no uh, hidden message in it other than something that I was trying to say for myself, which I guess songwriting is selfish at sometimes. So there you go. Thanks, Autumn. Good questions. And I uh, can't wait to see you guys again. You especially, Autumn, out on the road because she is, I don't know if you know this, but she's got a huge uh, dragonfly tattoo with that lyric kind of around it. So check out Autumn's profile. It's really rad. All right. Moving right along. Mailbag Monday. <laughs> Mailbag Monday. We need a theme song for this. Mailbag Monday. Mailbag Monday. Nah, it's Tav. Tavis, where are you? I went when I need you. You know what? I bet you Tavis could just rip something really cool there. Mailbag Monday. Mailbag Monday. See, see what I'm doing there with the, the guitar fingers? I wish I could play guitar like that. Okay. Um, last question here. Hmm. Kelly Ingram writes, what is the chance of Art of Dying and St. Asonia doing a show together in Ontario? Awesome question, Kelly. Um, as you know, St. Asonia is Adam Gontier's new band from formerly from Three Days Grace, Kale's cousin, um, Brazen, as they call it, I guess, in Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> um, we would love to do more shows with Adam. We're actually doing one uh, on August 22nd in uh, near Chicago at a uh, festival for Will Rock, this amazing station out there. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great to connect with Adam again. I've heard um, the whole Santa Sonia record, and I'm really impressed. So I, I love it. And uh, I know, you know, Adam's always supported us with, uh, with you know, guests performing on Raining, and uh, I don't know if anyone knows this, but he co-wrote um, Better Off Without You, which was one of the deep bonus tracks on our Vices of Virtues record. So we actually wrote that on Kale's porch in uh, near Peterborough, Ontario, and we were just, you know, morning session with Adam, just chilling, and that song came out. It was really great. So the answer, Kelly, is yes. We do plan on playing shows with St. Sonia. Um, and uh, we just can't wait to, uh, you know, have things line up where we can come through Ontario and a lot of other places out there. So, you know what? I'm just going to bonus, speaking of bonus tracks, I'm just going to answer one more question. What the hell? I'm on a roll here. Um, let me see. What do we got here? What do we got? Here we got? All right. Sherry Van Conant. Hope I said that right. Sherry Van Conant. Very cool. You could start a band called Van Conant. I would if I was you. Um, who is the neat freak in the band and who is the slob? Not ending there. Who has the most pairs of shoes on tour? Great questions. Definitely the neat freak is Jeffy. Um, I wake up to a clean bus every morning and it's Jeffy. It's all Jeffy. He uh, He's a neat freak. He, he loves to to you know have everything in its place and have everything be clean and I, and I think the whole band and crew we just you know we really really appreciate that because uh, it gets dirty out there and, and Jeffy just has no tolerance for he has no tolerance for dirt or lactose actually that's not true he's fine with milk but not dirt uh, so he's definitely the knee freak the slob I have a nickname uh, that that Cody gave me. He's our stage manager. He calls me the the Dorito King because apparently sometimes when we late at night we I guess I get Doritos and they wind up all over the floor or something. So although he is the Pringle Prince, so hard to say what you know. Are there more Pringles on the floor? Are there more Doritos on the floor? You'd have to really get down there and. Uh, get into it. I don't think either one of us is, is intentionally slobbing it out there, but uh, it's definitely, you know, chips, you, to, to make an omelet, you gotta break some chips, or to make a rock tour, definitely. 
<laughs> I don't know where this is going. Uh, who has the most pairs of shoes on tour? I roll pretty lean on the shoes. I think I bring two pairs. Um, Jeffy has the most jackets on tour. Tavis has the most socks on tour because I think he just wears them and throws them out. Kale, Kale runs pretty lean on on supplies. I think Sustar, our um, our front of house guy, uh, tour manager John Sustar, he definitely has a shoe addiction, shoe fetish. Uh, so he's always coming up with a new pair of shoes on tour and, and he loves it. He, once he gets a new pair of kicks, he's just like, you know, kind of, you can, you can see that, that spark that 